I'm sure you've sat through your fair share of high school classes thinking, when am I ever going to use this? I did. I completely blanked on modular arithmetic back then, no memory of it at all. But guess what? It turns out Excel's mod function is a total game changer and I should have paid attention. In this video, I'm going to show you six everyday problems that the mod function can solve. No math degree required. Trust me, it's way easier than you might think. You can download the practice file from the link in the video description and follow along. Let's say you're managing a bakery and you've baked 12 cupcakes, but a couple didn't pass quality control. So you're left with 10. Each box holds exactly four cupcakes and you get to keep the leftover cupcakes that don't fill a box. The most important thing to do is figure out how many cupcakes you get to take home, which is where mod comes in handy. We can see the syntax is number and the divisor. For example, mod takes the total number of cupcakes and divides them by the group size of four. Close parentheses and you can see it calculates that we'll have two left over, one for me and one for you. I'll copy it down to the other rows and you can see when we have eight cupcakes, we fill two boxes exactly so there are none left over. And the next day we make a bumper batch of 22 and we switch to larger boxes of six, which means we'll have four left over. Happy days. What if you also wanted to know how many boxes you can fill? Well, we could divide the total cupcakes by the number of cupcakes that fit in a box and we get 2.5, which isn't ideal. We could wrap it in the round down function, but a simpler way is to use the int function, which does the same thing, rounding the number down to the nearest integer. So we take 10 cupcakes divided by four in a box, close parentheses, we get two boxes, copy it down. This lot also fill two boxes and this one fills three boxes. All right, I digress slightly. So you've seen how simple the mod function is. Let's take a look at how we can use it to solve some common tasks. Did you know you can use mod to extract the decimal part of a number? In cell B5 here, we've got the value 5.45 and we want to extract just the decimal part, 0.45. The formula is simple mod, the number is 5.45 and the divisor is one. Remember the mod function returns the remainder after dividing one number by another. And when you divide 5.45 by one, the whole number part, that is five, fits perfectly, leaving the remainder, which is the decimal, 0.45. Easy when you know how. Let's copy it down. And there we've extracted just the decimal portions of the values. Clever, huh? Let's say you need to split these date and time components into their own cells. Remember, Excel stores dates and time as serial numbers, and you can see the same date and time without the formatting is actually a decimal number. The date is the whole number component, and the time is the decimal. That means I can use mod to reference the date time and divide it by one. That's going to extract the decimal portion. And if we format it as general, you can see the decimal portion there matches the decimal portion in this cell. Let's copy it down. And then all I need to do is format it as a time. And of course we can use int to do the same thing, but this time just returning the date portion, copy it down. And now we've got the dates in one column and the times in another. Let's rename this time and that job's done. Excel is commonly used for timesheets and payroll calculations, but handling time data can be challenging. The mod function simplifies calculating hours worked, including for shift workers that straddle dates. My timesheet captures the start time through to the start of the break, and then the end of the break through to the end of work. And we can calculate the hours worked either side of the break with separate mod formulas, and then simply add them together. We simply subtract the start of the break minus the start of work, and divide it by one. The one ensures the result stays within the bounds of a single day. Close parentheses. This is just going to prevent issues if, for example, the start time is late at night and the break starts after midnight, as we have later on in the week. And then we're going to add the hours after the break. So we just need another mod formula, takes the end of the work day minus the end of the break time, divide by one, close parentheses, press enter, and then we have the hours worked in the day, excluding the break time. And if we come down here to later in the week, we can see the break ended at 22.30 on one day, and we didn't finish work until 2 a.m. the following day. 
Now without mod, we'd get a negative result. Let's just demonstrate. So I'll delete mod here, and I don't need the comma one. Delete this one as well. So now we're just taking the time before the break plus the time after the break. Press enter, and we get the hash signs, which indicates that this is a negative time, and Excel simply can't display it. Let's control Z to undo. You can see the mod function is just an elegant way to handle tricky time scenarios, ensuring the time difference is always positive and interpreted correctly as part of the same 24 hour cycle. If you're enjoying learning about Excel's mod function and how it can simplify your work, imagine mastering even more advanced Excel formulas that can completely transform the way you work with data. That's exactly what you'll learn in my advanced Excel formulas course. It's designed to take you from feeling stuck to becoming confident with advanced formulas like index match, dynamic arrays, and even writing your own custom functions with Lambda. And the best part? You're not just learning, you're gaining real world skills with practice questions, personal support from me, and a certificate of completion to showcase your expertise. You'll find the link to enroll in the course in the description below and pinned comment. It's a fantastic way to take your Excel skills to the next level and stand out in your career. The banded row formatting in Excel tables makes them super easy to read, especially if they're wide. However, when working with dynamic array formulas that spill, formatting your data in an Excel table isn't an option without encountering spill errors. However, we can get around this using the mod function in a conditional formatting rule that applies the banded row format, as you can see here. And you can connect it to a checkbox that enables you to turn on and off the formatting with the click of a button. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go back to the example file and I'll step through how I set this up. We'll start by inserting the checkbox in this cell here. When the checkbox is checked, you can see in the formula bar, it returns true and unchecked, it returns false. And we're going to reference this cell to turn on and off the banded rows. Next, I just need to select the cells I want the banding applied to. And then on the home tab of the ribbon, conditional formatting, new rule, and here I want use a formula to determine which cells to format. My formula is equals mod, and then I'm going to use the row function to return the row number of the current cell. So you can see I'm currently in cell B6, and the row function will return six. When the formatting goes down to the next row, row function will return seven, and so on. And I want to divide whatever row returns by two. If the row number is odd, the remainder will be one, and if the row number is even, the remainder will be zero. And this means the formula simply alternates between returning ones and zeros for odd and even rows respectively. And the conditional formatting will be applied to odd rows. That is rows where mod returns one. And then all I need to do is multiply the result of this by the cell containing my checkbox. When we perform a math operation on a true or false value, they convert to their numeric equivalents of one and zero respectively. When the box is checked, the formats will be applied because one multiplied by anything makes no difference to the result. And when a value is multiplied by zero, it equals zero. So that's the formula. Now all I need to do is click on format and choose my cell formatting. I'm going to apply a fill color in a pale shade of gray, but you can choose any formatting you like. I'll click OK and OK. And now you have banded rows that you can turn off and on. By the way, if you want to shade groups of multiple rows, for example, three rows shaded, and then three rows not shaded, and so on, there's a link in the video description to a tutorial on how you can set it up, as well as in the practice file you can download. Let's say every third day you run a special promotion and you want to establish the impact on sales. Instead of manually referencing the sales data, we'll use Excel's mod function to make the process quick and effortless. I've already calculated the overall maximum and average for the data set, and I'll use mod to extract the sales values for every third day. Let's start with a helper column just to illustrate the different components, and then we'll put them together into a single formula. First, I need to establish which days are every third, and we can use mod for that, so mod. Now, because I want to combine this into a single formula, I want to return an array of results. So I'm going to use sequence, to give me an array of values one through 30, so 30 rows, close sequence, and then I'm going to divide these values by three. Close mod, 
and let's see what it returns. So you can see every third day it returns a zero. So all I need to do is add a condition on here where this equals zero. And now it returns false for days one and two, and every third day it returns true. And I can use this with the filter function to extract values that I want to find the maximum of. So let's just pop filter in here. Filter, what am I filtering? The list of sales values, comma. And to include them, I can reference the formula here that returns the spilled array of true and false values. So where there's a true, filter's going to return those values. Close parentheses on filter. And now you can see it's picked up 452, 410, 480, and so on. So now I can just wrap filter in max, close parentheses, and there's my maximum. So let's combine this into one formula. I'm going to copy the mod formula here. And then in this cell, we're finding the maximum of the filtered data set. The array are the sales, comma, and we're including, well, we're using our mod sequence formula there. Close filter, close max, and there's our maximum of every third day sales. Let's copy this formula and we'll place it here. And instead of max, we'll find the average. Close parentheses. And then we can use these formulas again. I'll paste it in. And instead of equal to zero, we want not equal to zero. And that's going to return the values for days one and two. So now we can see the maximum of days one and two is 490, pretty close to our promotion day. Let's compare that to the average though. We'll change this to average. And this is going to be not equal to. Now we can see that the average is substantially different. And we can calculate how different by dividing the average for every third day by the average for days one and two minus one. And we get 20%. So we can see that on average, the promotion is increasing sales by 20%. That's a pretty good result. And of course, we can see in the chart here the peaks for every third day. Now you've seen how the mod function can simplify everything from how many cupcakes you get to take home to analyzing sales patterns that I bet you weren't expecting. And in this next video, I share five more hidden Excel tools to boost your productivity. It's packed with tips to make your workflows faster and smarter. Go ahead and check it out. I'll see you there.